Hello, welcome. If you're new here, I'm Anna, a clinical psychology doctoral candidate. This channel is about applying psychology to everyday life and making research accessible to everyone. So if that is something you're interested in, I hope you decide to stay. Today we're talking about radical acceptance, which is a concept from dialectical behavioral therapy called DBT, which has its roots from Eastern traditions such as Buddhism. So a lot of what I'll be drawing from today is directly from the DBT handbook by Marsha Linehan, but that is more originally from other philosophical and theological concepts from particularly Asia. Radical acceptance is the idea that there are things that we can control in life and that there are certain things that we can't control. When we come across something that we can't control, such as another person's behavior, our own mental illness, our own physical illness, finding ourselves in an airplane during turbulences, getting laid off at work, the pandemic, completely and totally accepting reality for what it is including the painful parts. So what we must accept is that reality is the way it is, that we cannot change painful experiences when it is not within our control to do so, that there will always be pain both for ourselves and for others, that everything has a cause, including the things that do cause us pain, that life can still be worth living even when there is pain. Why should we accept reality? One reason is that rejecting reality will not change it. So taking the example of you're getting laid off at work, you're not going to salvage your job position if you start to scream and shout and negotiate with your boss. It's not going to really change your circumstance. Or if you're upset over the pandemic, I've seen a lot of people just rejecting reality, like, well, COVID is a hoax, it doesn't really exist. That's not going to change the fact that you're in a pandemic, that you have these restrictions. Pretending it's a conspiracy or that it doesn't exist will not change your situation. Another reason we should accept reality is because changing reality requires first accepting it. Let's say that you get a really serious diagnosis for a possibly terminal illness and you don't accept the treatment. You may end up denying that the issue exists, foregoing treatment, losing your chance at possibly saving your own life. Whereas if you accept, yes, I have a serious possibly terminal illness, only then can you move from that to taking the steps that are within your control to make sure that you have a positive outcome. You also have to accept reality because pain can't be avoided. It's just nature's way of signaling that something requires your attention. When you put your hand on the stove and it's painful, that's a sign for you to take your hand away. And there are actually people who have certain neurological issues where their brain doesn't signal pain for them and they often don't live very long because it's impossible to know how to protect yourself if you're never feeling pain. So let's say that you go through a painful breakup. You try to numb yourself with alcohol, with going out a lot, with dating other people. You're not letting yourself feel the pain. And by rejecting that pain, you're just causing yourself more suffering in the long run. Think about a beach ball. What happens when you put a beach ball underwater? The harder you push it down, the faster and harder it comes back up. Our issues, our pain is like a beach ball. It is not going to work for us to suppress it. Actually, studies have found that trying to suppress or deny something doesn't actually work. It always ends up coming back louder and stronger. It's screaming to be heard. The only thing we can do is to take the beach ball and just let it float away on the waves. Another reason you should try radical acceptance is because it's required for mindfulness. And mindfulness is required for something like self-compassion. You can't have compassion for the difficult parts of life if you don't first acknowledge what those exactly are. And another really important reason why we should practice radical acceptance is because rejecting reality turns pain into suffering. Suffering is pain times resistance. Pain is inevitable. Like I mentioned earlier, we all feel pain. It's a normal, natural part of life. But when we resist pain, when we go, no, 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 this can't be happening to me. Why is this happening to me? This isn't fair. Maybe there's something I can do to weasel my way out of this. We are transforming our pain into suffering. They've done studies where they gave an ice cube to people and they had to hold it in their hand. And the people that resisted the pain, resisted the whole task, actually suffered a lot more than the people who simply accepted what was happening and mindfully experienced even the uncomfortable sensation of something really cold in your hand. So for example, let's say that you're in plane turbulences and there's nothing you can do about that situation. Resisting that pain, resisting the nausea, the fear, the discomfort, the catastrophizing thoughts is only going to turn that into suffering. Whereas if you simply accept what's happening, accept that you have no control over the outcome, that yeah, the worst case scenario could happen and there is ultimately nothing that you can do about that, 
you might actually find yourself calming down. You might find yourself having a little bit of a moment of peace and going, yeah, like that could happen. And if that does happen, there's nothing I can do about it. So why worry about it? How is that going to help me? Another example is, let's say that you feel self-conscious about your body in a way that really interferes with your life. So you're not wearing the clothes that you want. You feel guilty when you eat. You feel disgusted with yourself when you look in the mirror, all that stuff. What if you were to suddenly say, okay, this is the way that I look. There's only so much I can do about it. I can take the steps that I want to take to make my body look the way that I think it should look. But ultimately, I accept that this is how I look today. And I'm gonna make a decision to wear the cute clothes that I want to wear, to eat this meal because I have an opportunity to eat at a restaurant where maybe I wouldn't on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel confident even though when I look in the mirror, I don't particularly love what I see. So that is, I think for me, a huge reason why radical acceptance is so important because suffering only exists when we resist natural pain. Another reason is because refusing to accept reality can keep you stuck in a loop of bitterness, unhappiness, anger, shame, sadness. Let's say for instance, that you're really upset. You're really having trouble accepting that somebody who really hurt you, let's say someone that emotionally abused you, is doing just fine in life, seems to be perfectly happy, nothing's going wrong for them, karma hasn't caught up to them. Getting really stuck over that can keep you in a mindset where you're constantly bitter, vengeful, angry, versus if you just accept, yeah, life's not fair, this person seems to be doing great, and just focus on your life, you will start to be more happy. Also, acceptance may lead to sadness, but deep calm usually follows. Remember, acceptance is the last stage of grief. It's normal to feel a sense of grief over painful things that happen which are outside of your control. But if you're able to accept them, that is a very healthy stage of grief. That's really where people want to get, and peace is just around the corner. And lastly, the path out of hell is through misery. By refusing to accept the misery that is required to claw your way out of hell, you fall back into hell. For example, I know some people get really hung up on the idea that life is work and life is hard and you need to push through it. There's a certain lack of resilience in that attitude. Like you would rather kind of throw your hands up in the air than acknowledge that that pain can be transformed into strength and that that pain is what makes the pleasure of life so incredible. Without pain, we would have no metric for which to compare pleasure. The pleasant things in life wouldn't feel so great because we'd have nothing to compare it to. We would only ever know pleasant and more pleasant and it, after a while, wouldn't feel so good anymore. Time, the battle, the fight, that's part of the fun of life. So that's why we should adopt radical acceptance. But what is radical acceptance not? It's not a promise that you will never have trouble accepting an outcome again. Of course, there will be times when you feel like running away from the pain. You'll just have better tools to cope with it and to more quickly move from anxiety to acceptance. It's a conscious, constant effort, not a one and done thing. It's something you have to keep applying. Radical acceptance is not approval. Just because you accept something doesn't mean that you're approving it. Like if you are accepting that a parent is always going to be very horrible and cruel to you, accepting that it's outside of your control doesn't mean you're condoning it. You're simply acknowledging that you cannot control another person's behavior. You are not omnipotent and that resisting reality is only making you more miserable, and that you need to find ways to work around the reality of what your situation is. And lastly, radical acceptance is not passivity or just resisting change, not at all. Just because you accept something doesn't mean you're throwing your hands in the air. Quite the opposite, actually. Accepting what cannot be changed allows you to turn your attention to what is, within your control to change. Without accepting reality, you cannot change it. So there are a few factors that can interfere with a person's ability to accept reality radically. One is that you don't have the skills yet. So maybe you haven't heard of the concept, you haven't been introduced to it, you haven't quite grasped it, you haven't practiced it or troubleshooted it. This one's simple, you know, this video is a good first start. I'm not saying that this is going to uh, be a one and done fix, but you have to be introduced to something in order to put it into practice. A second common reason, which I am sure some people will give us examples of in the comments, is you hold a myth about radical acceptance, such as acceptance is giving up, acceptance means condoning, acceptance means pain, 
as I just mentioned, that is not what acceptance means. Radical acceptance is actually a way to circumvent a lot of those things. And lastly, another factor that interferes with people's ability to radically accept the situation is there's just a really powerful emotion right now. Your emotions are just unbearable, unbridled rage, sheer terror, deep shame, some other really strong emotion is clouding your judgment. And it's really, really difficult to accept reality when your emotions are that charged. That's why in those cases, and really in any case, it may be necessary to first practice emotion regulation. That is why the emotion regulation chapter of DBT comes before the distress tolerance chapter where radical acceptance is introduced. If you struggle with extremely powerful emotions, therapy will be crucial to clear the blockages preventing you from radically accepting your situation. So how does radical acceptance look in practice? When you're confronted with a painful situation, first acknowledge that this is a painful situation. And then I want you to make a list of all the things within your control and all the things outside of your control. Is there anything within your control that you're not trying? So for example, let's say you didn't get into your dream school. Is there anything within your control that you can still do? Maybe you can write a letter to the admissions committee petitioning the decision. Maybe you can get a tutor for the SAT the next time around. Maybe you can take a gap year where you take a bunch of college level classes and add them to your CV. Maybe you can still work on strengthening other applications. There are certain things that you can do, maybe not necessarily to change this particular situation, but what will happen from now on. Then once you've done that, radically accept the things that you cannot control, those things that are on that side of the list where there is nothing you can do about this, this, and this. Worrying about them, trying to change them, will not actually change reality. It will only make you miserable. So you didn't get into your dream school. You've done everything you can, you've exhausted all your options, acknowledge reality for what it is. Actually say or actually write down, I did not get into my dream school. This is a moment of pain. And then instead of wallowing in it, let yourself feel the sadness and disappointment. Fully immerse yourself in the experience. Mindfully tolerate whatever comes up for you. Let whatever thoughts and emotions come over you do so. You can't get rid of them. You can only surf them. Thoughts, emotions, pain, they're all like waves in an ocean. You see them come and you see them go. That is a guarantee. They're never there to stay forever. All you gotta do is surf them. This is sometimes also called cognitive diffusion and ACT, which is acceptance and commitment based therapy or mindfulness of current thoughts in DBT. So if that's something you wanna look more into, make sure to ask your therapist about those two techniques and hopefully they can help you out. Then practice some gratitude, really savor life. Acknowledge all the things that you're thankful for, turn your attention to the glass half full. You can still acknowledge that it's half empty and that that's painful, but you can do so in a way that also makes a conscious decision to focus on the half full part. Don't let the pain ruin the present day. Look around you at the trees, the people, the beauty around you. Feel the savory, nourishing taste of food. Feel the comfort of your bed. Acknowledge the good amidst the bad. And there is always, always something. Remember, even in Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, where he was a Holocaust survivor, even then, he found things to be grateful for and things to savor. If he can do it, you can do it. And also, I think it can be really helpful to focus on other people's pain. For example, the Dalai Lama wrote in one of his books about how he was in a great deal of physical pain at one point, and he was traveling across the country. And at some point, he started to pay attention to all the people outside of the car who were experiencing a lot of pain. He was focusing on their suffering instead, and that really helped alleviate some of his own intense pain. Our brains can only truly focus on like one thing at a time. If you're focused on someone else's pain, you cannot be fully focused on your own pain, and therefore it will numb your pain a little bit. So altruism, trying to improve the lives of other people around you, that can ironically improve your life and help you radically accept your situation and help you cope with suffering. Now, I wanna just mention, I'm not gonna go into too many details, but I kind of had a, an epiphany about this entire concept a couple weeks ago, where I felt like I was kind of between a rock and a hard place, and I felt like I had kind of done everything within my control about a specific situation. And it really dawned on me, like there was a situation when, like I said, I was really cornered and I, and I really realized that, okay, there is nothing else I can do about this. And it was in very clearly seeing that, very clearly being able to visualize that I was backed into a corner, that I realized, okay, that is what it is. That is the situation I have to move forward. 
I have to enjoy the present day. I have to savor everything around me. I have to be grateful and I have to just accept that this is just how my brain is. This is just what my brain does. This is just something I have to live with. It will never be completely fixed. That is what it is. And I say this a, a bit, I guess, to inspire hope in you, but also to really drive home the point that this video is not enough. It's not enough to just be introduced to this concept because I've known about it for a while now and it wasn't until recently that I really that it really started to hit home for me. You have to get to that point where you see very clearly for yourself what is within your control and what is not. And that is the moment where you have to decide, okay, if this is not something I can control, I am making this conscious decision to still enjoy my life. I hope that if you're struggling with something or struggling with radical acceptance that this will be able to happen for you as well. And it really shows that sometimes there are some benefits to feeling like you're in between a rock and a hard place because it allows you to kind of come to certain epiphanies. If this video was something that you found helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and you would like to see more of my content. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in a couple more days.